Lady Lazarus for Sylvia Plath released the poison of many years and acted as a catharsis for the repressed feelings of hostility she had always harbored against Otto, her father. She had always yearned for the Jews' sense of community and always thought of her personal pain in terms of the massacre of the Jews during World War II. In Lady Lazarus, the worlds of war and religion are opposed and contrasted through the ironic reference of the title. The speaker equates her attempted suicide with the experience of Lazarus, who lay buried for three days till Jesus raised him from his grave. The biblical reference is given an ironical twist. While Lazarus was raised from suicide, the poet imagined herself to be the female counterpart of Lazarus. The success of the poem is partly due to disturbing tension between the seriousness of the experience described and the misleading light form of the poem and her use of the light verse. In Lady Lazarus, we see that the posture in it belongs to a desperate quest for such new purity as of Lazarus raised from the dead. But the delusion is plain enough. Though she tries to delude the reader, the meaning is clear. Plath reflects on her own experience of suicide. At the age of 20, in 1953, she tried to commit suicide by swallowing a large number of sleeping pills and hiding in a cellar beneath the house for three days. She attempted it again by deliberately driving off the road and survived that experience also. But finally, in 1963, she put her head in the oven and lost the game with death. Caught, I have done it again, one year in every ten, I manage it. Uncaught. The absurd boast is made in tone of a hysterical pride, utterly remote from that of the quiet and acutely observed self-knowledge of the bee palms, which move in the direction of being rather than not being. This black flip mode destroys capacities for meaning and carries us into moral inversion of a dehumanized kind. Caught a sort of walking miracle, my skin, bright as a nasty lampshade, my right foot, a paperweight, my face a featureless, fine Jew lines. Here, Plath equates her suffering with the experiences of the tortured Jews. She becomes, as a result of the suicide she inflicts on herself, a Jew. There is a gloating satisfaction both in the inversion of appropriate feeling and in prompting disgust in the reader. The exhibitionism becomes offensive, like much of the schizoid destructiveness in contemporary art. Caught, peer of the napkin, O oh my enemy, do I terrify, uncaught. The persona has established a ritual of destruction. She peels off her mask of perceived suffering like a napkin and asks, Do I terrify? Mocking the audience. But such postures belong to a weakness, not strength. There is a fear of being found, so that anyone who seeks genuinity to bring her back to life and contact is an enemy. Caught the nose, the eye pits, the full set of teeth, the sour breath will vanish in a day, uncaught. A description of the body, there is a resistance to the reader who shares her penetrating schizoid vision elsewhere. There is a new tone here of abandonment to dark rationalization, caught soon the flesh, the grave cave eight will be, at home on me, uncaught. Grave Cave 8 is the kind of chaos play on words as in laying patience Julie or I am no un. Caught. 
and I, a smiling woman, I am only 30 and, like the cat, have nine times to die. She imagines compulsive ritualized suicide attempts as an effort to avoid an absence at the center of her being, a gap left by her father's loss. By identifying with the father's death, his death becomes ironically her first suicide, to be repeated at 10-year intervals. Here she affirms the ritualistic nature of her efforts. Quote, this is number three, what a trash, to annihilate each decade, unquote. To try die every 10 years is to identify with a father who died after the first 9 years of her life. Living was laden with a guilty yearning that could only be undone by this brutal means, by focusing murderousness on herself rather than on her father who left her. If the death of her father is illogically conceived by psychologically perceiving as her own suicide, we can understand the confusion if we regard the gap in Plath's self as the unfilled confirmation of her identity by her father. A crucial component of this identity is erotic, the need for a pre-adolescent girl of nine to have her womanliness accepted and confirmed by the male in her life. Caught, what a million filaments the peanut-crunching crowd shoves into sea. Uncaught. The tone is hysterically strident and demanding the crowd's morbid interest to see the saved suicide mimics the attitude of many of the revelations of the concentration camp's brutal instance on the pain, apparently seen with scientific detachment by the crowd. Caught, then unwrap me hand and foot, the big strip tease, gentlemen, ladies, uncaught. She describes in a specific erotic terms the efforts to arouse her after a suicide attempt of being unwrapped in front of a crowd of spectators. Her concept of her audience reflects the self-hatred imbuing her self-exposure, it is autonomous. Quote, These are my hands, my knees, I may be skin and one. Unquote. She sees no end to her resurrections and mocks the audience that has stood by silently while the horrors were being perpetrated. The idle crowd who reveled in her agonies and were sexually stimulated by it, but who cannot now understand her survival. Caught. Nevertheless, I am the same, identical woman. The first time it happened, I was ten. It was an accident. Uncaught. Plath modulates into a calmer tone and lapses deliberately into personal history, inventing details and altering time to suit the governing. Caught, at 10 it was an accident, at 20 they had to pluck the worms off me like sticky pearls. Uncaught. Caught, I do it so it feels like hell. I do it so it feels real. I guess you could say I have a call, uncaught. She plays another scene which may reduce at another audience, but despite the apparent confidence, she is not now placing her own destructiveness so much as reveling in it. She is ringmaster and promotion agent to her own suicide, caught. It's easy enough to do it in a cell. It is easy enough to do it and stay put. It is the theatrical, uncaught. She speaks of experience in the field of dying, thus proving that Lady Lazarus is a psychotic fantasy, a person who has committed suicide and can still talk about it. Caught, come back in broad day to the same place the same face, the same brute amused shout. This is her resurrection in broad daylight, alive and back to the same place, same face and the same brute who hails her back to life. Caught a miracle that knocks me out, there is a charge, uncaught. Here she speaks of her resurrection as a miracle, 
the phoenix like come back in broad day suggests more generally plots increasing concern with aids sources in the eastern occult and with eastern versions of renewal as forms of escape reincarnation figures in the late poems as does the pattern of samsara the great wheel so important to ears from which the dead are reborn caught for the eyeing of my scars there is a charge for the word or a touch or a bit of blood uncaught plath also derides what she considered a gruesome aspect of organized religion caught or piece of hair or my clothes so so her doctor so her enemy uncaught her anger from the beginning has been broadening its range but suddenly it shifts focus and alights upon the primary target her doctor the nazi scientist her enemy her father's totem caught i am your opus i am your valuable the pure gold baby uncaught she mocks at her father's concern for her the motive for the self castration in this poem is clear in the aggression directed at the father in vengeance and behind him the castrating mother all these are ways of dealing with meaning figures who are threatening her with revenge for her hatred against them caught that melts to a shriek i turn and burn do not think i underestimate your great concern uncaught plath links concern with the nazi sifting through piles of jewish ashes for valuables to loot she also reverses the concept which seeks to prevent or remedy the damage or annihilation it is a concern that she should be entirely annihilated caught ash ash you pock and stir flesh born there is nothing there a cake of soap a wedding ring a gold filling uncaught only a pseudo morality that is soap conventional relationship that is a wedding ring and a gold filling something to stop a stop gap pure plug the purgation she seeks in the fire of death reduces her to nothing in revenge she threatens to emerge as pure hate these lines also refer to the nazis sifting the jewish ashes to loot valuables like a soap ring or gold filling caught her god her lucifer beware beware uncaught after her prostitution fantasy of suicide changes into a confrontation with the persecutory doctor she becomes a child a valuable possession and the doctor feels the ambivalent model of the split father in the final stanza we come full circle from the strip tease unable to gain the confirmation of sexual identity even by exhibiting the body in the bizarre manner of recovery from suicide she voices her murderous rage towards this godfather she equates the nazi scientist with her god her lucifer to power light and dark extremes merged in the bright fire of his crematorium caught out of the ash i rise with my red hair and i eat men like air uncaught she swings into a scream of fury and promises a phoenix like revenge here the enemy has been enlarged to include all men and the bitch goddess is presented as a goddess of fire who has adopted a male identity and male weapons to defeat him at his own game of destruction her impulse is to rise like a flame caught to the same place the same face the same brute amused shout uncaught this is her resurrection in broad daylight alive and back to the same place same face and the same brute who hails her back to life her impulse is to rise like a flame from the ashes of a false life to consume the false male images she is a salamander of phoenix she also has the characteristics of the chameleon which was supposed to eat air 
Plath's response to her father's death was to become like her father. The compulsive aspect of Plath's ritual of self-destruction mirrors the strongly obsessional nature of her personality. One of the finest poems from the last six months of Plath's life is Lady Lazarus. It begins with a private revelation and then flies off into the relentless, surrealistic, frequently schizophrenic pattern of rapid metaphorical associations that do not relay upon a specific narrative focus for cumulative impact. Though a narrative framework will never be Sylvia, not even a remote Sylvia, but the myth of Sylvia Plath.